We had never done a panel until two weeks ago. <laughs> and you'd think, twice in one month, who knows? Um, let us know if this is something you like uh, or if you prefer preaching. We will be getting back to some preaching here um, in a little while uh, next week. But I uh, wanted to bring these guys up because they've all experienced um, victory in their lives. And they have a great testimony about you know, just how how they steward well what God has entrusted to them. And so I wanted to open up here real quick with a uh, scripture. And many of you will probably be aware or familiar with the first part of this, which is Proverbs 3, 5 to 10. And so it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. And we normally think about that maybe in a spiritual way or... You know, in my thoughts, I'll acknowledge God. But it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Be not wise in your own eyes. So this is one way you can acknowledge him. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. It's interesting that that follows trust in the Lord with all your heart and in all your ways acknowledge him. And so I wanted to start with some questions to these guys because uh, they have a lot to share and um, we'll be as uh, concise as possible. But let's start with Jeremy and Victoria. How important is tithing to you and why? Tithing uh, is something that is important to us. Always tithe, but it came along with spiritual maturity for us. Um, when we did give, even when we were broke college kids, um, we never regretted it or wished we hadn't done it um, or wished we had used the money for something else. Uh, but we learned through the Bible um, and through Financial Peace University that uh, how important it is to tithe to your local church. Um, in Leviticus 27:30. Uh, it says, one-tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain or from the fields or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord and must be set apart to him as holy. Go ahead. Um, I think for me, too, it's just about obedience. Um, you know, it's what the Bible calls us to do, to give um, of our first fruits um, one-tenth. And so, um, you know, it's really about obedience and that we're just managers of what he's given us. Um, it's not ours to begin with. Um, there's a verse in um, Psalm 50:10. It said, "The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it." Um, so I think it's pretty clear that we're called to tithe and we're called to give that to our local church, um, you know, out of obedience. And all right, so I'm going to play the devil's advocate. Um, you read a verse from Leviticus. You read a verse from Psalms. Isn't tithing just an Old Testament thing? Like, aren't we under the New Covenant now? No, that's not a trick question. How, how would you respond to that? That wasn't part of the question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I think you find it in the New Testament, too. I have other verses that are New Testament here. <laughs> they were for later. But, um, but I think it's throughout the Bible. And, um, you know, we're called to be Christ-like and God was a giver. He gave his only son for us. Yes. Um, yeah, I'll just That's leave good. it at that. <laughs> Josh and Regina, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I mean, pretty much they said everything that we said as well. We didn't have scripture to go along with it, though. I looked at a lot of scripture, but I didn't write any down. You didn't write any down, did you? Okay. Um, just that our money is God's money. It's his money, and... Um, he wants to use it as he sees fit and it's not going to happen unless we give that 10% and it, it is a command um, and at first when me and Josh were new um, well not new I guess <laughs> um, before we even knew anything about tithing and we didn't even go to church God had put it on our heart um, to give and I heard, you know, on the radio about the 10% and that he would bless you. And I just gave what I felt on my heart at the time. And 
he's just uh, blessed it beyond my wildest dreams. I couldn't even, it's been just amazing. Um, but I also think it's also a gift and it's not an obligation. Um, and just changing your way of thinking about it is huge for me yeah. because I hear people say, oh, well, they just want our money. Um, I don't know what they do with that money, you know, and um, some may not be as open as we are here at this church, um, and maybe some churches have messed stuff up and used it for the incorrect ways, um, but, I mean, we're supposed to be good and good, uh, what do you want to call it, stewards, stewards <laughs> of our money, and uh, it's just like giving money to somebody out on the street. If God puts it on your heart, you don't know what that person's going to do with it. But it's your heart that matters. So, and I tell people that all the time when I hear complaining about it. So, but yeah, I think uh, you guys did good. <laughs> uh, the only thing I would have to add is uh, he wants us to do this. And every time you do do this, he um, supplies everything you need. So it comes back tenfold. And that's in the Bible, and I've seen it happen. It happened with us multiple times. That's good. So, I mean, obviously, if something's in the Old Testament, it's something that God implemented. And God, does God change? No. Like, does he change his mind? No. So he's revealed additional things to us, but that doesn't change what he already gave us, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, all right, so are tithing and offerings the same? If not, what's the difference? You know, what do you do with each? Yeah. Um, no, so they're different. Um, a tithe is defined biblically as 10% of your first fruits, so off the top of your income, whatever that may be. Um, An offering would be anything above and beyond that um, that you feel led to give, whether it be to the church, to an individual, a different organization, or whatever it may be, so that's how So I let's say we need a new set of drums, and I decide I'm going to buy the church a new set of drums, and as a result of that, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that's my tithe now, and I'm going to wait until I would have given X number of dollars, let's say it was $2,000, you know, once I get to that's what I would have given anyway, and now I'll start tithing again. What do you think about that? Is that a good way to think about it or not? I would say no. Um, I think the tithe is really set apart to um, provide for the basic needs of the church, whether it be keeping the lights on or ministry or outreaches or different things that the church does, salaries, taxes, you know, operating expenses and that kind of thing. Um, and I mean, I guess if you were to buy new drums, like maybe you thought they need new drums and the church didn't necessarily think they need new drums and they could have spent that money um, better a different way, possibly. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. So then what part does offerings have to play? If the tithe is the first 10% off of what you earn, um, what, what are offerings? When would you give one? You know, who would you give that to? What kinds of things would you have to say about For that? For us, it's uh, whatever, whatever God wants us to do. Uh, we listen to what he says. So we're driving on the street, and somebody need, is begging. If we're led to give, we give. Um, and we give what he wants. Not what we want, what he wants. That's good. Maybe the last five bucks in our pocket or whatnot, but it's what he wants. Yeah. And if it's more than what we have, we'll go get it mm. and then come back. And that'll be for anything, it, whether the church needs it, somebody on the street, um, a friend, uh, yeah, co-worker. So I'm hearing it's kind of needs-based? His needs, <laughs> not ours. God's needs. Definitely his needs. Okay. So at times I've tried to do that out of like, oh, I think that'll be right. And I didn't listen and never got a, not that you get anything for the offering or you're not trying to get anything. But when you do, you get something back through God. Yeah. Um, he gives something back to you for that. Um, when it's outside of what he does, I've noticed that we don't, you don't get that, not recognition, but that um, spiritual, uh, you, did right. you did right. This is, you're following what I said. 
-hmm. So I'm hearing you say that when you give over and above your tithe, it's based on what you're hearing from the Lord. Is that right? For us, yes. Yeah? Do you guys have anything to add? I'd say for us, it's a, a lot of it's spur of the moment. We might be sitting here and, and there might be a need that comes up in church, whether it's for Aka or it's for a guest we have or something, and we just kind of look at each other and go, and we both, generally we both agree. I mean, it's rare that one of us would say, yeah, we should, we feel led to, I, I feel led to do this, and eh, I really don't. Um, and we generally align right up with the amount that we want to give to. Um, I've found that if we don't make that decision right away, it fades. Um, and we forget sometimes, you know, like, ah, oh, let's pray about it, let's talk about it. And, and then a week or two go by, and you go, oh, man, we missed the, you know, we could still give, but we might have missed the opportunity to bless and whatever that need was or, or things like that. So we really try to do it quickly. Um, and we really try to make sure that we, we just we have funds there so that we know we can we can give. There's you know there's not a problem with the money being there to give. So, so I'm hearing you say a couple things. One, you set money aside that is earmarked for giving, and two, you talk about it together and you try to do it, make those decisions together. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. How do you decide what you're going to set aside to give? Um. We, uh, we, you can answer that better than me, probably. <laughs> we, what do we call it? Our, uh, I mean, we budget for tithing. It's in our budget, and we budget for giving above and beyond and offering. And um, I guess it's not a set amount every month or whatever. We personally have a goal to each year give a bigger percentage away each year, like by 1%, you know, and yeah. whether that always happens or not, um, you know, sometimes it doesn't, but um, that's just kind of our goal to, as we move forward in our walk with God and our spiritual, you know, mat spiritual maturity to continue being more and more generous, so. Can I add to that? So in my case, um, I'm self-employed and I know people have that come to me tithe, um, but there's been times that I've been a part of an offering above and beyond um, when they knew God had put it on their heart that I needed something or um, maybe a bill needed to be paid, you know, during COVID when I was not working for two and a half months. Um, and there was people that went ahead and gave me above and beyond and, um, so at those times, too, I, I'll pay what it needs to be paid, but um, it's been <laughs> crazy how it's been way more than what they had given me, and I'm able to then bless others with that, too, because um, I never know what tips I'm going to get, and um, so it's cool that I'm blessed, and then I can be a blessing to others. Um, so the many comes, we don't necessarily have... As, well, we do as far as the tithing, but as far as, um, what was the other word? Offering, Offering thank you. <laughs> um, that just comes with money. There's been money that has come in that we don't even know. It's been like bonuses and like a check that came from um, like a settlement from like 10 years ago, all of a sudden arriving in the mail, you know? And then we're able, God puts it on our heart to, okay, you need to do this and that. It's just Holy Spirit talks to us when he needs to talk to us. And we give it away when we need to give it away. So why <laughs> would you give away your money when you could just as easily spend it? Like, what, what reason would you have to do that? It's not our money. It's the Lord's money. Okay. Uh, he blessed us with that money. And if he wants us to give it away, we'll give it away. That's how I look at it. I would agree with that 100%, but also because it's fun. Like, yeah, it is fun. I mean, I like to shop yeah. and I like to spend money, but <laughs> it's just fun to bless others and to be generous. Um, mm -hmm. Can I read a verse really quick, a couple? Um, 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but for God, for God loves a cheerful giver. 
Um, and then I also just want to read the Passion Translation of that. Mm -hmm. It says, let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves hilarious generosity. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's it's really good. to give. And we've, <laughs> we've gotten really creative with things we've done, you know, of hearing needs. And we had a neighbor once who was having a car issue. And um, I don't really remember exactly if they... We're struggling to afford it, but we just felt like we were supposed to pay for this car repair. And so, but we didn't want them to know, you know, and I think that's part of the fun of it is doing it anonymous, anonymously too and not, um, you know, saying, look at me, yeah. look what I'm doing, you know. And so we had to figure out what repair shop they took their car to <laughs> and um, when it was going to be there. And then, so I went to the repair shop. And the guy working there was like, huh, you know, what are you doing? And so, you know, you're, you're witnessing to that person too, yeah. you know, through your generosity. And, you know, we paid for it. And they never knew. Like a few days later, I saw her at the gym. She's like, you'll never believe what God did, you know. And so I was like, no way. Like, <laughs> and I, I thought, sure, she was on to me. But I don't think they ever knew. That's so awesome. it's really fun. It's fun. That's so cool. So you said it's the first 10% off the top. Does that give you an incentive to make more, to earn more? Or should we all be poor? <laughs> hey, the more you make, the more you give, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a... I mean, in, in my, all of my working life, I've been commission-based, so it's really up to how hard I work and being able to sell and we make some months are better than others and some aren't and so I it's fun when we have good months and we have big bigger tithes checks and we have more to spread around at Christmas or at right. the end of the year and we look and we say where's some needs that we can go and bless and so that's good that's good um, just to add to that um, uh, I think I have the verse somewhere um, but, I don't know right now, but, um, I mean, it says in the Bible that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the hills and, you know, everything. Like, he was wealthy, obviously, right? Like, I think we would agree that God's wealthy. And, I mean, I don't know. That doesn't mean that everyone's going to be financially wealthy, maybe. But I don't know. If, I don't think we need to be poor-minded, you know. That's good. That's good. Josh and Regina, uh, how have you guys worked together to create a vision for your financial life? Do you talk about these things together and do you actually work together to make a vision for your life financially? Um, well, yes, we work together with it. Um, it's, it's really hard not to. Um, you have both incomes, same account. You've got to work out of it together. Um, or different accounts. Yeah, with, with hers is a little different. She has a business account, so she works out of that sometimes for personal use. So, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, first off, we communicate, and we uh, set tithing as the highest priority, um, and then our bills, and then um, such as, you know, car, house. But we always communicate, and... We always um, sit down, like monthly, to see where we're at because it changes um, so frequently. If there's something that changes before that monthly that we discuss, then we talk about it. But communication, I feel like, is key. Um, even with me having my own um, business account and things that flow from it, um, it can you know, you can start forgetting to tell your partner stuff, just busy life and um, different things, and um, just you need that continual communication about it. Um, but yeah, we've, and with the help of Jeremy and <laughs> you guys, we did do the financial piece as well, and were able to like look at the budget correctly. We were never taught how to do that growing up. Um, we never went, well, 
I never went to church. I mean, Josh kind of did as well, but we never learned about tithing and what that looked like. And so um, having the foundation, and we started backwards because we didn't know that stuff. And so God just put, you know, we pretty much were kind of tithing to different things and not the actual church doing the 10% thing, you know, um, at first. And then he worked with us, and then we learned and... um, but yeah, communication, I think, is key. So you said you learned and you changed some things. How have you seen God's blessing in that, or have you at all seen God's blessing? Oh, my goodness. Yes, go ahead. Tenfold. <laughs> um, I mean, Regina started it with uh, just giving to, I think, Way FM, like 10 bucks a month. Mm-hmm. And she literally got, within a week, 10, mm-hmm. 10 new clients. And we were coming from a poverty mentality. Um, I had struggled uh, mental issues, um, different things. Um, had quit doing nails for a while, went to something else, so income was really low. We were just going off of Josh's, raising four kids, and we just had a poverty mentality. Um, and then I started listening to worship music, and um, they had said something on Way FM. And yeah, it started there. And then where did it grow from there? Oh my goodness. Um, I mean, God blessed me with 10 new clients within the first two weeks of giving that $10. And I sat there and thought, okay, if I can afford a pack of cigarettes, then I can afford (laughs) to give towards God. Um, And I, it, because of my childhood and what I had been through, I had a hard time trusting. And so this was the first glimpse of hope that I can trust God um, with my finances. And it's just been, we don't worry now. There's no stress. There's no, um, what are we going to do? It's, God's going to provide, and we're just going to just rest and wait. (laughs) Um, But it's, I mean, we've been able to bless so many people, and um, I know the little ones, like my daughter and the boys, even family members, we've gone out to um, restaurants, and Todd White spoke upon, if you're going, because Christians are the worst tippers, they say, Um, and we've tipped the bill several times, and they've come, like you guys said, just the joy of that, and um, we've been beyond blessed, and to be able to share God's blessing with others, and it's been just amazing. It's been awesome. Has giving opened the door for you to share about God in any way? I think, Victoria, you mentioned at the car repair shop, you had an opportunity to minister through making that very uncharacteristic kind of a a gift. Um, But can you think of any other times when that's opened the door for you? Well, at like restaurants, we have written scripture So we will sit there and ask God, um, what scripture can we write on here? And sometimes we'll write it out, or sometimes we'll just give like Philippians 4.20 um, and put it on there so that they could um, look and see. Um, But you don't want to give a scripture unless you're going to give a nice tip, right? (laughs) Because otherwise it could work against you. (laughs) That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So Jeremy and Victoria, they mentioned financial peace. I know that you um, have been hosting that for years. What caused you to start hosting that? And what kind of testimonies have you heard through that? Um, I think, so we took financial peace um, a couple years after we got married. So um, it was like 2006 or so at our church we were at at the time. Um, And we thought it was great. We thought we were smarter in some areas, and we didn't really grab hold of the whole concept at first. Um, But it was kind of planted then. The seed was planted. Um, And so then, um, gosh, I don't remember. Was that 
uh, Living Water in Frederick, um, I, I don't know, around the time Eden was born maybe, or shortly after, um, that we were kind of looking for a place to serve and um, something that aligned with our passions of, you know, um, helping other people see financial freedom. Um, and so that's when we, we listened to Dave Ramsey on the radio. And so that's when we decided to become leaders of that. So that's great. Jeremy, do you have anything on that? Okay. Cool. So what, what, um, testimonies have you seen in other people's lives? Uh, as a result of going through Financial Peace University. I've heard a little bit from these guys, but can you think of any others that are glaring examples of they really were blessed and their lives improved? Um, I would say one example is uh, we've had numerous families in the church when we get ready to do a class that say, hey, I want to sponsor someone. You know, someone sponsored me or someone gave us a half scholarship to do it. If there's somebody who, you know, can't financially pay for it, you know, we want to help them, and just seeing that, it made that much of a difference. You know, a lot of those people are repeat every class, hey, we got a scholarship if you know somebody. Um, so I think that's cool. It's also really cool when people come up that have taken a class recently or even years, and they say, hey, I'm talking to a friend of mine or so-and-so, and they want to take the class, and I told them about, you know, the change it made in me, the difference. And so just hearing those type of things um, is, is really cool. That's great. I'm thinking of my own life. Um, I remember the first time I made an investment in stock or in like a, an option or in a piece of real estate. And my level of education really increased dramatically because now I had money on the table. How have you seen in your own life in this principle of giving, how has that affected your spiritual life and what you've learned about life? <laughs> um, well, uh, when we first started doing this, it was a, a, a complete stress relief. The burden of finance was removed. Um, it was just abundance of blessings. Um, boy, I don't know. Um, what else? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, so when you put money on the table, generally your commitment increases. Right? So have you found in your own life, as you give, is it an act of worship? And if so, how does that affect other parts of your life? Well, it is an act of worship. Um, and it's affected every aspect of our life as far as giving. Um, it's a surrender. Um, we're supposed to give God everything, every part of us, our whole hearts, and that includes money. Um, and anything that he has given us should be a gift to others. Um, as far as if you have a jacket and the person needs a jacket, you give them the jacket and the shirt too. You go be a, um, above and beyond. Um, and we're able to do that. And I feel like with these little steps we take of faith, like Steve always says, jumping out of the boat, um, getting out of our comfort zone, and um, doing things like that, it increases your, your faith. Um, and it draws you nearer to God, I feel like. It has me. Um, and it's a testimony to the world, so. That's good. You guys have anything? Okay. Um, so what does it mean to you to be faithful with money? Like, wh how would you define that? And then how much time does it take to be faithful with money? I mean, I think to be faithful, you, um, you're doing things in the order that God calls you to do them, which is the tithing, and then you're taking care of your basic needs. Um, you know, food, water, clothing, your house, things like that. Um, and you're taking care of your own household. Um, and then when you've accomplished that, you move on to blessing others and giving abundantly and, or, you know, excessively offering, I guess, above and beyond your tithe. Um, 
but it takes time and effort to prioritize those things and and do them in that order um, that blesses God and blesses others. Yeah. I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, I feel like for us, we also um, try to do research on the organizations that we give to, um, to make sure that the majority of the funds that are given go towards the need, um, you know, different even outside of the Christian ministries that we support, like Homes for Our Troops is one that we support. And, you know, the majority, 90-some percent of, the, of every dollar goes towards. Um, and so, you know, we used to give the Wounded Warrior, and then we found out that it was the opposite, that like 10% went to the soldiers and the rest went towards overhead. And, and so we really tried to take time to, to make sure. I mean, that's why... We appreciate that the church publishes. You guys take the time to put up and let everyone know where the money goes and where we're short, and people can see where the money goes. And, um, and hopefully that encourages you know people to, to tithe and to, to give more. Um, I think the other thing for us, um, while we don't mind getting a, a tax advantage for giving and for donations, um, we finally got past that place where that was important, make sure we got a receipt every time so that we had it on our taxes. Um, and to a point to where if we're giving cash, it's like, you know, God sees it, we're being obedient, it's not about the tax advantage. Um, and we wanna be faithful to do those things and even though there might not be a trail to be able to turn in for a tax. So it's really good. Um, let's see a couple more things here. Let's say somebody's in a really tough spot and they're like, I can hardly even make my bills. I don't even have enough money for rent. I don't even have money for food. Where should that person start? Do, is it important for them to tithe too? And why is it important if it is? I guess I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> um, well, we were in that situation, um, like I said, and um, again, I think it's praying and asking God, Lord, where do you want me to start? And he, just like with everything else, he meets you right where you're at. And so I feel like praying and like I did I mean it just came through through the radio and it like my spirit was like whoo now that I know what that is <laughs> um I was like okay I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that ten dollars and then I mean as I went along things just increased um I know I've shared this before but I didn't tell Josh that I was spending those ten dollars okay that's where I say communication is good. But I didn't tell him, and I don't know, I was at work, and he called me and said something, and I was like, oh, yeah, um, I'm giving $10 a month um, to Way FM. And he's like, what? We can't even afford that. And I'm like, well, this is awesome because I've gotten 10 new clients. And he's like, what? So when he saw that that happened, it increased his faith, and then he's like, oh, okay, well, now let's sponsor a child through Compassion International. Again, we didn't know about tithing, so we thought this was tithing. Um, and God didn't show us any different, or maybe we missed it, I don't know. But <laughs> um, So then we started supporting Emil, and we've supported her now for seven years. And then we learned about tithing, and that we were supposed to do that. So. Again, we got back in the budget and then took financial peace because we did have debt. We had um, lots of credit cards because, you know, those are fun to use when you don't have money. <laughs> but, um, and so just, he's going to meet you where you're at right now. But I think just stepping out and giving um, is key and just asking him. So just yeah, follow-up no. question on that. Is your financial position today improved over when you started with that $10 a month? Yes. 
Tremendously. Tremendously. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think Regina hit it right on. They were faithful with the little. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, the story of the widow's mite, she gave, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, it is. Okay. You know, that her gift was even more because she gave out of her little, you know. Um, and I can't think of the whole story off the top of my head, but I assume she was blessed for that. <laughs> you know, she was faithful with a little, and I think that's what he calls us to do is be faithful with a little. So even if you're in a position like that, you have to take that first step of faith and be faithful. And then you have to also be smart and make wise choices and, you know, not spend more than you make and things like that. You know, it takes um, some common sense to it too, but I think being faithful with a little is where you start. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, Vicky back, how do you say that? <laughs> yeah. um, he'll give you more. So we were faithful with that little, and then he's given us more. And, um, yeah. And I hear Jeremy and Victoria say, we want to be faithful with even more, 1% a year. We want to increase and ratchet up over time. And, man, what a great testimony you're going to have. That's awesome. I think a lot of times um, people say, well, let me see what's left over. You know, let me get through the month and get my, let's see what's left over. And, and uh that's really not the way God in, intended it. Um, and so as hard as it is, it's got to be the first thing on the, on the list. Um, and there's stories of so many people in here that have done that, practiced it. There was enough left over. Like it, God just provided. Um, the other thing I guess I wanted to um, cover on that just from one of the earlier questions was we really um, – we really try to be an example to our kids. That's good. Um, we want our kids to see what we're doing. Um, well, both of our families, they tithed growing up, but um, we didn't really get a lot of teaching there. We didn't, um, and so that's important to us. We want to raise kids that see the need in church and like through financial peace, that's what, I mean, that's what helped us um, yeah. with that. And they have Financial Peace Junior, which is like kid, little financial kits where, you know, teach them to save and teach them to have a, a compartment for giving and a compartment for spending. Um, but we really want them to see that. Um, we want them to see us when we give in public, you know, when we do things. We want them to, you know, to share in the blessing of, of that and to see it and, um, you know, even encourage them to do the same with their, you know, with extra or with their tithes or their offerings that they have so that's good so i wanted to add too that this uh just like Regina said that she pretty much tested god in this aspect and it says in the bible to test him on this just test him did. 10 bucks you'll see the blessings come may not be tomorrow may not be the next day but it'll be a few days later if not the same day it happens either way I feel like it's a trust thing. I mean, yeah. do you trust God that he's going to provide? He no, I only trust providing. him with my salvation. <laughs> 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 but I didn't, I didn't, I had a hard time with trust. And so when you're coming from a place of, gosh, oh, I don't know, I, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to step out. And um, so that trust thing is huge. Yeah, if we can trust God for our salvation and we can trust him for a prophetic word, yeah. should we also be able to trust him with our money? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. So I'm going to do one thing here that may stretch you a bit, and I'm not going to apologize for it. Oh, no. Could everybody please stand up? <laughs> and I'd like Jeremy and Victoria and Josh and Regina to pray a blessing over everybody here because they have internalized something. They have something. They have fruit in their life as a result of these principles, and I'd love for you guys to release that onto our congregation. So as you're, as you're led, please pray. God, we just thank you for your blessings that you've poured out on each one of us, Lord. Um, whether it's big or little, God, we thank you for each of the blessings that you've given us. Um, Lord, in it, your word, it says in Luke 6.38, it says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. 
for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you also. And I just, um, I just pray that blessing over people, Lord, that they would just um, have generous hearts, Lord. We pray for provision for each and every person here, Lord, uh, for you to just meet them where they're at and um, guide them through uh, this um, spiritual journey of um, tithing and offering and just being generous and living the life that you've called them to live um, with their finances also. Yes, Lord, I pray that um, any wrong thinking about um, your provision, that um, their minds will be renewed by your word, Father God, and that you will speak to each person in this room of what you want them to give, Father, and that their hearts would be open to trust you, Lord, in your word and your truth, Father God. We just thank you for what you're going to do in their lives and the abundance of blessings that are going to pour forth. And uh, we just praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, thanks for the opportunity to, mm -hmm. to be here and to share um, the things that you've done in our lives, um, just the things you've taught us. Um, God, I pray that um, the hearts that needed to hear any particular thing, uh, Lord, would be, uh, would have been open today. Um, mm -hmm. Those that might hear it in the future um, through the YouTube or Facebook um, yes. would hear what they need to hear. Uh, God, I, uh, I just thank you for the increase uh, that is coming to our church, Lord, just for increased giving, uh, increased offering, or just the blessings that are catch the fire we'll be able to do in our community lord and in the uh, organizations that we support uh, across the world god i thank you for the increase and the blessings that will come and through that through faithful giving uh, from our church body and from those outside and i just uh, ask god that you would uh, help people to uh, test you in this that they would put their tithe Worldly things that are taking their place. Thank God that you would bless them. Lord God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for these faithful couples. Thank you, God, that we have an opportunity to praise you in every area of our life, to worship you, God, not only with our time and not only with our talents, but God, also with our treasures, with our resources. And God, I pray, just in, as in everything, as we use things, God, you give us more. It's like a muscle. You, you, we use our muscle and we gain more. And uh, God, I pray that that would be true for every person here in this body as they use their giving muscle, that um, their entire financial position would be increased, as Virginia said, dramatically increased. As, sorry, as um, Regina had said. And God, um, I just thank you for, I thank you that we do live in a free country. I thank you that we live in a prosperous nation. And I thank you that we have the opportunity to give. Thank you that um, you've shown us, that you give us your son. You've given us a gift beyond anything we could ever contain, Lord, more valuable than anything we could ever come up with on our own. And in comparison to that, God, anything that we have, Lord, is yours. Thank you. 